Hello everyone, my name is Clive Swansbourne. Welcome to Piano Insights. Today we're going to be looking at one of Chopin's greatest piano works, his Barcarolle. He wrote this uh, towards the end of his life. It was one of his late masterpieces. It's probably my favourite Chopin piece. Uh, I think in terms of sheer pianistic colour and the architecture and the atmospheres that he creates in the piece. Uh, it's a tough one deciding between this, for me, this and the fourth ballade. I think this, if I were to take it to a desert island, this one would be the one that I'd want to be. If I had a piano and one piece that I could play or listen to, I'd probably choose this. Anyway, it's um, a barcarolle is a Venetian boat song. And Mendelssohn had written some much simpler barcaroles than this before Chopin. I'm not sure that they were any influence at all, really. I don't see the influence of Mendelssohn in this. And um, Faure took up the, um, the form and wrote many barcaroles. Of course, they'd also uh, occurred in operas and operettas and things. But this is probably, I think of all barcaroles, probably the greatest anyone ever wrote. It starts off, it's in the key of F-sharp minor, and so in some ways it's kind of somewhat grateful to play. It's like the Schubert G-flat impromptu. It's so flowing and so calm and peaceful. Not always, of course, but it has a sort of soothing quality to play much of this music because it's on the much more ergonomic black keys. The black keys are much more fitted to the, the human hand than, than the white keys. I'm not sure why, whether that's why he chose it, um, but it's a possibility. I like to think of this piece pictorially. We know that we're in Venice, for example, and we know we're, a, we're going on a gondola ride. So why not think of this slow, well, it's not a slow introduction, it's an introduction. It's a fairly grand introduction, actually, as the lowering of the boat into the water. That's how I see it anyway. One hears a sort of great crash, a thump. And then from then on, the water sort of eddies away from the boat and becomes becalmed. And then the oarsman starts getting ready to go. So it's nice to do a diminuendo and a ritenuto there. Um, it's one of the most beautiful introductions I can think of. It's just so pianistic and so sonorous. And then, the, as I say, the Barcarolle proper gets started immediately after that. This beautiful, one can hear a gondolier sing this melody. It's so beautiful and it's just, it's very sinuous. And some of this very wavy kind of um, movement in the melody. So it's very, very necessary to keep this absolutely legato. And for now, quite placid. It hasn't moved into anything climactic yet. Uh, the first dark spot is when it shifts out of this um, F-sharp major uh, into um, D minor, D-sharp minor. He goes... So it's a bit darker here. So it's not so much... Uh, never rather Voice it further towards the thumb, so it's more even between the, uh, the voices. That makes it a sound a bit darker. So without it, it would sound like this. A 
much like. But what I prefer is. continues very importantly there you see now we're back in the major here so the darkness has dissipated played like this that's sort of dull sounding I think they sound so much better if they're played as a dissonance and instead of even cleaning them out just leaving the dissonance I find um, this by far the most interesting way of playing is I'm thinking again water splashing um, not absolute cleanliness, you see, of sound. Here, where it goes to there, then you can clean it out, I think, because he's back to the melody and he's moved into the minor just for a second here. Motifs he uses quite a lot is this. It's important, I think, not to play those absolutely at strict time because otherwise you get this. You can do like he's pulling on the oar, and only when he pulls, or the not the oar, the whatever boatman use, um, that stick, the barge pole. Um, you have to push it down, and so it, it doesn't just go straight in, in one straight line. It's sort of a heave-ho thing there. And I think it's, it's good to do that on all of them. It just seems not, it doesn't seem musically right to, to not do that, to me anyway. I'm not saying, you know, I know all the right answers, but that's how I visualize it anyway. And then when finally... Um, there's no, none of the heave ho anymore. You don't really need it here. One feels a sort of sense of release that um, has taken place there. I prefer the second one soft. Of course, you don't have to do. He doesn't mark it soft, but I like it soft. And then here. Different, a different approach to both of these. I think this one is because it droops down, it's more melodic. Not so much, in, that's not so interesting. from this don't, don't, don't draw attention to it I think it's much better if you just go instead of going you don't want to do that I think it's much more effective not to do that so we're in, back to the home territory of F sharp major here Um, he's, he's developing
developing those ideas now, just a different version of that. And then he moves into this new territory here. <laughs> section of the piece and now we're into the what would be called the middle section or the B section and I see this as gradually moving out of the back back street canals as it were into the Grand Canal and we'll see how he does that. It's wonderfully subtle writing here. This is sort of just solo a solo voice here. <laughs> again but we're in the Grand Canal here it's one of the most splendid pieces of piano writing partly because um, it is climactic but yet there's still an undertow of real quiet accompaniment and so um, until until it really reaches uh, when it's building the climax you're still you have still have to play the accompaniment very quiet so it says Poker Piamoso here so what have we been? So this would be the, it's a bit more than that, in other words. And don't start immediately, as with all eggshell arandos and poker piamosas and things, ease your way into the tempo instead of just going. sort of steering the boat into the big canal and we're, we're, we're on our way in there. And this is just one, it's, it's slightly quicker, traffic is moving quicker I guess on the big canal and um, it's just got to be very well, very well balanced so that the, um, the sort of the rhythmic heart of the piece underneath is extremely quiet, sotto voce, he even marks sotto voce then. So we got this long note here, which has to last for a measure and a half. Very quiet, everything. 
except that. This tune has to come out, but not be loud. It's no good going... No, it's got to be... something that really needs to come out at all and even there don't bring it out too much otherwise it will it will start clouding the issue it's kind of an echo of what's just happened up here an octave lower you see and then another one of these almost ghostly canal proper here. So it's a bit loud, a bit um, faster than, which is also a bit faster than. So faster than both would be. This becomes later on in the piece uh, transformed into the biggest climax of the whole piece. But this is very quiet and very muted. It's like moonlit music, quite silvery. And then it, it becomes quite a bit more climactic. Here it goes. Somewhat funereal, this next part. He marks it meno mosso, starts off with a mysterious long trill and goes into um, an accompaniment which is kind of funereal. It needs to be heavy and dark and not staccato, not jolly at all. And watch out for the end of this trill. It's very melodic. So it's no good going... key but it seems uh, like these wonderful harmonies lead us actually to to light uh, uh, and a lovely C sharp major here but it's quite dark here and so it needs to be it's no good going I've heard it done like that it really doesn't sound appropriate at all modern harmonies and we have 
two versions of this now. Really Wagner almost. And then a different harmonization. Saying we're moving out of of these dark depressing times and we're moving through major chords. And only one minor chord there actually. Incredible manipulation of the harmony there to change the mood. And now we're, we get into a really moonlit scenario here. free this page it's leading and then gradually it moves more into time but he's got seven notes a seven note group then a ten note group I think he would have wanted it very free okay, so we have a loud version now of the original theme uh, and octave doing the accompaniment very important to keep those light and not not make them dominate <laughs> again but this time it, it works to the highest pitch of dynamics and it's really loud it works so start off soft you building I find it more I mean you don't have to again I just like it when you're building to a big climax and it's been loud you come back a little bit so you can push even further to a higher uh, to a higher level <laughs> So, just as it was in the earlier version of it, in A major. It's coming out of a different um, theme of the piece. It was the second theme, which was the Grand Canal music. So, it's wonderful how he managed to, to join this to, to the original theme. It's just slate of hand. Um, so, we just have... A, this is difficult to play, really, um, because of the, particularly the left hand. It's got a lot of chords. You need to figure out what the best fingerings are for these chords. It's jumping around a lot. So just um, become very athletic about that. And be, think legato, I think, when you're playing these chords. It's often very, very useful to think legato instead of thinking about jumping. Try to sort of go across the keys without raising too much um, your hand because it's probably going to end up too loud because you even though it's very loud this it if the left hand is too loud it's going to ruin it so towards the end of this you get uh, at the very end of this section <laughs> just as loud as you were. So you, this, these huge chords here. I go down here just for the fun of it. Different sound here. It shouldn't be. No, why not?
so these chords are so thick. You really got to try and keep everything soft except that, and then and then it's just gorgeous to listen to. Otherwise, it can get very thick very soon. If you did this. sound nice at all. See? And then here again. Everything extremely quiet here. I think Rachmaninoff loved this kind of writing. fireworks just coming out of that out of that gloom this darkness here so have fun with it and finger it just one two three four one two one two four one two four one two four some editions have very complex fingerings here but just keep it simple and then we come to the end here with these It's first, I mean, you can make that really melodic now. And now a little, a, a new theme which we haven't had. I don't think we've had this one before. To, to throw in there at the very end. Thank you very much for listening. That was uh, Chopin's Barcarol. I encourage you all to get to know it. It's one of the great masterpieces in the piano literature. And I hope you'll subscribe and share and like, and I hope to see you in future videos. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.